What is going on everyone, my name is Code Moore, and welcome to the second episode of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we're going to get a window displayed to the screen, so let's get to it. Now, we're not going to do anything in our launcher class just yet, because our launcher class is only responsible for starting our game. So we're going to put all of our window code in a new class. If you're using Eclipse, right-click on your main package and head it up to New Class. Now, we are going to name this class Display because it's going to handle all the display of our game, such as our window. And if you are using packages, we'll pop it in the .display package. Go ahead and create that display class. Alright, so first things first, what is a window? Well, many applications have a window, such as Eclipse here. It has a title at the top, maybe an icon like Eclipse, and it also has, uh, if I can get them displayed here, it has a minimize button and the X button at the top. That's what a window is. And obviously, our game is going to have to have a window, that way we can see our game. So how do we go about creating a window in Java? Well, we use something called a JFrame. So we're actually going to create a private JFrame object at the top of our display class. I'll name it frame, but we're not going to initialize it to anything just yet. I'm making it private because other classes shouldn't have to access this JFrame object, and I'm name naming it frame. Now Eclipse is going to give us an error, and that's simply because we haven't imported JFrame. If you are using Eclipse, you can hover over JFrame and select Import, or use the Control shift o shortcut, or you can always just type in the imports manually. Alright, so now we have a JFrame object, which we've called Frame, and that's how we get a window displayed to the screen. Now, a window, or a JFrame, needs three main things. It needs a title, a width, and a height, so we're going to create a few variables for that. They're going to be private as well, because other classes don't have to access them. This one's going to be a string, called title, and we're also going to need two integers for the width and height of our screen. Now, whenever we talk about width and height in this tutorial series, unless I say otherwise, we're going to be talking about terms of pixels. I'm assuming that you know what pixels are. If you don't, you can read up on them. They should be fairly simple to understand. They're essentially the little dots on your computer screen that make up all the uh, images and colors. So whenever we talk about width and height, we'll be talking about pixels. All right. We have a JFrame object and the three main things that it needs. But nothing's initialized. We're going to initialize everything in the constructor of our display class. So let's create the constructor, public display, and there we go. And the constructor is going to take in the three main things. It'll take in the title, the width, and the height of our window. Next, we have to set these class variables up here equal to the parameters that we've passed into the display class. So this dot title equals title, and the same thing for width and height. Now, I'm using the this dot keyword in front of the variable names, like this right here, because I've named my class variables the same thing as my parameters. That's the only reason why I'm using this dot, it's simply because I named my variables the same thing. Alright, now instead of cluttering the display constructor with all this initialization code of the JFrame, we're actually going to initialize uh, the JFrame in a new function, or in a new method rather. So we'll create a private void, and I'll name it create display. And at the end of our constructor, we're going to call this create display method. This is just so we don't shove everything inside of this display constructor. So the create display method is actually going to initialize our JFrame. So frame equals a new JFrame. And our JFrame is going to take in a title as a parameter, so it'll set the title of our JFrame as it's creating it. Next, we have to set the size of our JFrame. Size to width and the height that we've passed in, the width and height variables. And now we've set the three main things that a window needs. But JFrames have to be set a little bit more. For instance, we have to set frame.set default close operation to jframe.exit on close. This is a very important line of code. This will make sure that your window closes down properly. If you don't have this line of code, when you press the X button at the top of your window, your window will close, but your game might not close in the background and it'll still be running, and that's not good. So don't forget this line of code. This will make sure your program closes down properly. Next, we're going to set a few optional things. You don't have to have these things, but I recommend you do for this tutorial. We're going to do frame.setResizable, and we'll set that to false. And resizable is basically the ability for the user to drag the window to resize it. But we don't want that. We're going to set that to false, that way our window is stuck at the width and height that we give it. Then we're also going to do frame.setLocationRelative to, and we'll pass in null as a parameter. What this method right here does is all it does is when the window first pops up on the screen, it'll appear in the center of the screen instead of at the side. So it'll appear at the center and that'll look all nice and pretty. And finally, we're going to do frame.setVisible equal to true. Now it's kind of silly that we have to do this, but JFrames by default aren't visible. You can't actually see them on the screen. So we have to set visible equal to true. Alright, that's all we have to do. Now you can, if you're using Eclipse, type frame 
dot, and then you can scroll through this awesome list and you can set a few other things as you wish, but we're going to leave it at this for this tutorial. Alright, really quick recap just so everyone gets it. We have a JFrame object at the top, that's the window, and then we set the string title and the integer width and height for our width. We take those in in the, in the display constructor, we set the variables, then we call this create display method. This will initialize our JFrame and set the title of it, set the size of our JFrame, then set the default close operation so it closes properly, set resizable to false, and then location relative to, that way it'll appear at the center, and we set it visible so we can see it. So this display class should get a working display on the screen. There's only one problem. We haven't called a new display anywhere, so this constructor is never going to run. So in our launcher class, we're going to write some temporary code just to try this out. We're going to create a new display object. This will call the constructor, obviously. And we'll pass in the title of our game. You can name it anything, and any width and any height that you'd like. I'll do 300 by 300 for demonstration purposes. And we're going to get an error simply because we haven't imported our own display class because it's in another package. So hover over display and click import if you are using packages. There we go. This will create a new display and run this constructor here. In turn, let's create display method and hopefully getting a window displayed to the screen for us. So if you're using Eclipse, head on up to this run button and click it. And hopefully we get a window displayed to the screen like so. This is awesome. It has the title that we gave it at the top. My window is 300 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall, just like I set it to be. The minimize button will work. And if you press the X button, your window will close down. And also, we're not able to resize it. See how I'm not able to resize the window at all? That's because we set resizable to false. And if we press the X button, our window will close down perfectly. That's all for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. We got a window displayed to the screen. In the next tutorial, we actually have to add something to the window. That way, we are able to display graphics to it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next tutorial.